The windows in the kitchen really needed some work. <laughs> they were starting to fall apart. And one of them had a big crack running through it, and the, the glass had actually separated into two pieces. And the, the glazing was falling out. So the first thing to do there are these screens that are in the frame of the window that really don't work. I think they've, they've been painted too many times in there. They just never pulled down for us. So I, I pulled those out just to get rid of them. Before I actually took the windows out, I wanted to get the glass ordered so that that could be being cut while I was working on the windows and I wouldn't have to necessarily take them out right away. So I measured the size of the glass from the outside which is a little bit of guesswork, but I thought I knew where the glass was as far as the, the size in the window. And the glass actually came back the next day. I'd, I'd figured it would take a few days or a week or something, but it came right back, so, that, so it wasn't such a big deal. So I could take the windows out, and they're awning windows, so they're, they're attached on the sides, and they, they sort of fold out at the top. So I took the screws out. And they've been in so long, it, it's that thing where you think you have all the screws out, but they're still kind of in and it's not really coming out. So you don't know how much to force it, but, but they did finally come out just fine. And from that, I could take them out to the shop and start to actually work on the window frames. Now the glazing was really dry and just falling out. Now, I've seen where you can heat up the glazing with a heat gun and it'll soften it up, but I didn't have to do that. And it was sort of in two forms. There was a, a drier glazing, which was probably the original, and then a more rubbery stuff, which is probably a patch at some point in the, in the past, but they both came out. Now, once the glazing was out, I looked for glazing points that might be holding the glass in, but I didn't really see anything, so I pulled the glass out carefully. And then once I had the glass out and I'd done a little scraping, I found a little tiny glazing points in the window frame, which weren't what I was used to, but this type must, must have been used at some point. And then I needed to get the hardware off, and I'm going to replace this. And I thought I would just scrape, but the paint was rather thick. You would be able to see where the old paint had chipped off through the new paint. So what I decided to do on the inside of the window was to scrape the old paint off completely with, with a heat gun. And this, this worked surprisingly well, but better than I thought it would have worked. So, and it was nice that it wasn't just a whole bunch of sanding and dusty, and it wasn't chemicals and, you know, like a stripper, which I know are really nasty. So the heat gun worked, worked really well on this. Now, I didn't test for lead paint, but I've not found any so far in the house, but I was fairly careful with the dust. I did sand a little bit once I got the, the bulk of the paint off, and it wasn't so much to get the rest of the paint off, but just to make it smooth. That's really what I was going for, it was a smooth subsurface for the, for the new paint. And a little hand sanding on the intricate parts. Now, before I started rebuilding the frames, like painting and filling in things, I wanted to make sure the new glass was going to fit. Because if I had to resize the inside of the window to fit a piece of glass that was too big, I would want to do that now. But it ended up fitting really nicely, so that was good. So once that was checked, I could paint. And I got some primer, because it was mostly bare wood on the inside and I could paint. And I didn't get the surface perfect, but it's much better than it was. Now to put the glass in, I put a little bead of glazing around the frame first. Then I could set the glass into that glazing and that'll make a seal between the, the frame and the glass. then kind of mush it into the into the glazing. And then for the new glazing points, and these are what actually hold the glass into the frame. It's a little metal stop that holds the glass in. I started doing this by tapping these in with a hammer, but I felt like I was swinging the hammer too close to the glass. You can just sort of rock the glazing points in with a putty knife. Now in the past, when I've done this, and it's been a long time, 
I've gotten the glazing that comes in a can and you sort of roll it out as a worm in your hand and then you kind of mush it into the corner and then scrape it smooth with a putty knife. I remember it being really slow and hard to get a good surface. So I opted this time to try the glazing that comes in a tube and then you kind of squirt it out into the corner. And this worked much quicker and it gave me a good seal but it, it didn't look quite as good. Then I have to let the glazing sit for about four days while it sets up. Now to paint the outside, which is a dark brown. I think the color is Turkish coffee. So I put down some masking along the glass, which is pretty straightforward. The corners can be done by overlapping the tape and then cutting a line through the corner. And then you can pull the one side off and then you can lift the other side up and get the other piece of tape out from underneath. And when you put it back down, that corner should, should line up perfectly and give, give you a nice tight seal. And look good too. <laughs> then it was time for the brown paint. And it was just a matter of painting that, that frame. It went much quicker with the masking in there because I didn't have to worry about that edge so much. Now you want to let the paint overlap the glazing onto the glass so you get a good seal. So you don't want the, the masking up and over the glazing, you want the masking on the glass. Now with that dry, I can take the masking off. Now what I found is I could ride the edge of the X-Acto knife along the side of the tape. And if you're sort of careful, you can, you can find that edge by feel and then just cut a nice straight line. I got it pretty close. The windows could go back into the kitchen. We've had a string of dry, sunny weather for the last month. I didn't really need to board up the hole left by the windows. I just had some scrap pieces of rigid insulation taped together and stuck in the hole. And then I could put the windows back in. I was a little nervous how this was going to work because I was going to have to hold the window up with one hand and then put the screws in with the other hand. But it, it wasn't actually as bad as I thought it was going to be because they sort of stayed in place without the screws. I didn't have to really be holding them. I was thinking I would have the windows back in before the cabinets were in, but, but I had to climb through the the hole for the dishwasher to fit one of the windows in. So the screws went in. When I had taken these out, I had completely forgotten to mark which frame went in which opening, not realizing that was going to be important. So I sort of guessed when I came back with the windows, and I, I had them both in, and they kind of worked, and it was sort of the kind of thing where I didn't know whether they weren't quite working because I had just had them out for a while and the screws probably weren't in exactly the same place. Or was it that I mixed up which frame was in which window? So I, I took a gamble and I switched them and then they, they fit much better. So I think, I think the first time I had them in, they were switched and weren't correct. And when I put them in the second time, they were where, where they were supposed to be. Then I pulled out old hardware. Now this little piece on the windowsill is actually a little smaller than the new piece. So I had to cut out a little bit more of the wood and make the space for the new bracket just a little bit bigger. And then some paint. I, I primed first over the old color and then painted the window frames. Then it was time to really put the hardware on. I found with the bracket in the sill, the wood below where the hole is for the little clip that fits in wasn't quite big enough, so I had to make that a little bigger too, but that wasn't too hard. Now the first time I drilled holes for the hardware, I made the mistake of using a drill bit that was just a little bit too small. That's kind of the way I usually go because I want it nice and tight and you know it holds really well, but what ends up happening is it, I strip out the head on the screw because it, it's soft and it's just not going in as easily as it, it should. So I, I found a, a larger drill bit that worked better. 
And I tried doing it by hand, and that was just painful. So I went back to the drill, and I, and I found a better driver, too, that fit the bit better. I was able, in the end, not to strip the screws out. And they work, amazingly. <laughs> the, the very last thing was to clean the glass. Because it's sort of silly to have a new window that's dirty. <laughs> I got it pretty clean on the first try. I think I am going to have to go back and, and do this again. So there's still some streaks on it. And the new windows are in. It's been sort of a long project that I've done a little bit each day for the last month or so. Thanks for watching.